Good morning, Congressman Keating. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Chris. How are things? Things are well. We just uh, came off the floor, and uh, interesting enough for some of you listeners uh, that have been concerned about the nuclear issue and the nuclear plant uh, in you know Plymouth, Pilgrim plant, mm-hmm. and what to do with you know the spent fuel there. Is it going to stay there? We just advanced a bill, a uh, strong bipartisan bill, including an amendment I had on it that uh, uh, will deal with that waste issue uh, and actually prioritize plants like Plymouth. Uh, Pilgrim in Plymouth to uh, uh, to have that spent fuel taken away. So, uh, so that's good, good news. news on that front. That's real good news. No, because that's been a concern for a long time for a lot of people. In fact, I know people who used to be big proponents of nuclear power uh, who were concerned about Plymouth and that it's shutting down. And so, so they're, they're going to have a plan to get rid of the uh, the waste. Not just there, but around the country. Uh, but uh, Plymouth would be prioritized under this. And you know, ratepayers have paid. Wait, wait, wait do you hear this figure. Uh, over $31 billion uh, as part of the cleanup uh, of this spent waste. And uh, it hasn't been used uh, because of blocking Yucca Mountain and everything uh, in Nevada. So we're, we're on the way. It, it might face a, l- a little tougher battle in the Senate, but we'll see. But overwhelming vote, the, the one we had, uh, is certainly going to give impetus to uh, resolving this issue after years, act, actually decades, decades in action. Well, that's excellent. So, so we've got we've got something about a, a nuclear power here locally. Let's talk about nuclear nuclear uh, power or, or weapons in, in Iran and the in the, tr- the deal that the president uh, just pulled out. of. What are your thoughts on that, Congressman? Well, I, I think it was a, a serious mistake to pull out of that. Uh, something that uh, I've done a lot, and and on the committee on foreign affairs, that's the committee that deals with nonproliferation, uh, among other things, there's a great fear it's going to lead to other countries in the uh, Middle East going ahead for their nuclear plans. But here's the deal. Uh, they were complying to this. We had an unprecedented verification procedure where inspectors were coming in. And there was a lot of misinformation about this. They're saying, well, they're not allowed on military bases. Well, yes, they are. Uh, I don't know where they get that, uh, that information. Uh, if there's anything that's out there that they have as evidence, they are allowed on military bases. And they're saying, well, you have to give 28 days notice. Well, I, I wasn't the greatest student, but uh, when it ca- came to physics, you know, the, the life of these things, uh, you cannot hide that <laughs> in our lifetimes, let alone 28 days. So uh, we made a mistake uh, on keeping us and uh, keeping them uh, honest, you know, because the fact is they've gone ahead with this plan for years. Uh, they've done it secretly. Uh, and we're now at a stage when they, there will be no secrets in what they do. And people also said, well, in eight years, they're just going to have nuclear weapons again. That's another myth. Uh, this, this agreement permanently banned it. And if they move uh, and try and take their uh, domestic program, which they'd be able to do in that time frame, uh, and go forward. If they moved in the other direction, uh, we still have power to act on them. Uh, Even the people that may not have liked the the plan, why are we doing it now when for, you know, there's limitations for 8, 10, 15, 25 years and permanent limitations on it. Why would we do this now uh, when they're not... uh, doing it, and we can check on them. We're speaking with Congressman uh, William Keating, uh, who's our congressman here on the South Coast. Congressman, what, what, do, you, what do you say about the, the Israelis? Uh, some of the Israeli intelligence were saying that they, they were giving information to the White House and to the U.S. government. How, how do you feel about the, the accuracy of that information? <clears throat> we had that information. There was nothing in that video uh, that Netanyahu did that uh, we didn't know. Uh, we had all that information. In fact, that's why we moved for the agreement itself because they had a surreptitious plan, because uh, we needed verification. So actually, when I saw that, there was no new news in it, but also it underscored the need why we had to have this agreement in place. You can't, they can't be trusted. The, now, one of, one of the criticisms, of course, of the Obama administration is that he didn't, is that the reason it's in place and was able to be torn up by the president is because he didn't get the Senate to ratify, he didn't treat it as a treaty. Do you think that that was a, a procedural error in, in the long run? I don't think so. I think that, uh, you know, we wanted to act while uh, our allies were all in place. Okay. Uh, you know, see, this is an agreement done with, as you know, with several 
countries. So going ahead with the treaty thing and having to hit that standard uh, of votes uh, would have been difficult. And it also could have really hurt us because this was a, a coalition coming together, the P5 plus 1. This is a, and, and the fact we had a coalition made those sanctions so strong. We were working as a group uh, putting the hardest sanctions, people have argued, on, that's ever been put on any country uh, was on Iran. Uh, and is destroying their economy, uh, really driving people. Uh, so there was great unrest over these sanctions and, and the economic effect. And the reason we were able to do it is because it just wasn't the U.S. unilaterally. It was all these countries working together. So uh, the other thing that this does is, uh, uh, I mentioned uh, in your program before, I had a chance to uh, talk to President Macron uh, of France, mm-hmm. and they, they're, they're staying in it. The U.K. people I spoke with uh, in Britain, they are staying in the plan. So we're dividing uh, th- this coalition uh, of our friends, uh, and it's hurting us. It keeps us isolated, and we're not as strong. Uh, as I said in the committee hearing, uh, after the, you know it was announced that we were going to pull away, I said, somewhere, Putin is laughing, because <laughs> this is just what he wants, this division with the West. Um, speaking of Congressman Keating, Congressman, um, before before we shift to, to this local news about fishing, which uh, I think is, is, is very important, and, as you do, uh, just uh, any comments on the, the three Americans that have come home from North Korea? Well, it's, it's really uh, any time we welcome people home, uh, especially in a, when they're being held in a place like that and treated the way uh, Americans are being treated, uh, it, it's a happy day for our country. But I must tell you, as that was happening, uh, my heart was going out uh, to the family of Otto uh, uh, Warmbier because uh, his his folks sat down with me uh, because of the committee I'm on and things. We we met together. Uh, they shared pictures uh, and information that that were not public. Mm-hmm. Uh, the condition of their son, a young, a wonderful young man who did nothing mm-hmm. uh, except be captured for no reason and held, and and effectively uh, life was wrung out of him by the time he was released and sent home. So as happy as I was uh, for the three families, uh, my mind did race to uh, what must be going through the mind, uh, uh, you know, of that poor family. Uh, it, it just, it's inexcusable, uh, uh, the, the brutality uh, of uh, Kim Jong-un and North Korea and, and the way they treated him, tortured him. They, no, wrung the wrung the life out of him is is, is a, is a is, is a, <clears throat> no. That's that's a, it was a horrible horrible situation. So, but <clears throat> transitioning to to good news, Congressman, a great story today in the Standard Times by Michael Bonner, uh, who's a great reporter over there about um, your b- the things you've been doing on fishing. And so, l- let me say this before you answer. There have been some complaints here. Now, I know some of the things you've been doing, and I keep my powder dry sometimes for the fishing industry. I, you know, I have good contacts with your staff and with your former staffers. Um, I know how much you've been working on the fishing industry, but sometimes it's not, I'm not at liberty to say it because, you know, some, sometimes the work is best done behind the scenes. Talk a little bit about what you've been doing for the fishing industry here in New Bedford to try to get those two sectors reopened for ground fishing. Well, in the, you know, in the next, uh, I hope, two or three weeks, uh, we're going to be uh, on the road to dealing that. There will be uh, a plan uh, that will be public. Uh, They will move, you know, under with Sector 7 right now, which really won't affect things. Uh, They'll be able to lease, you know, people will uh, be able to lease those boats. uh, And then they'll get the quotas to deal with it. So people hopefully, uh, this is the beginning of the road back to open this up. Uh, We are working uh, with NOAA. Uh, as well on on a couple of issues that will help dramatically in this process. One is, you know, once they release uh, their plan, there's a there's a required comment you know, period, uh, and usually in our office we are, we argue for the long uh, comment period because uh, we're having constituents that just continually want to comment and have time to do it. This time we're we're trying to work hard to see if we can shorten that period because that's time wasted from getting people back fishing. So. That's something that uh, we're hoping to, you know, to have be part of this procedure. The other thing is, you know, when they're, they're going to go back and they made it clear, there's going to be a penalty because of the fish that were caught illegally uh, where there has to be a correction uh, on that. What, what we're also working on and getting great cooperation on uh, from NOAA is the fact that uh, 
the time lost uh, already in fishing, that that quota that was lost, that estimate of the quota that was lost during this period, be counted as the penalty so that when uh, next year starts, uh, the people aren't facing an additional penalty, that it's, you know, that is counted as the penalty. So uh, that would be very important because we don't want to go through a period where everything's up and running and the next season starts and they're facing a reduced quota because of this penalty. So we're seeing if, uh, if that would be considered the penalty. We're speaking with Congressman William Keating about the, the, now the fishing industry. So, but I think people need to understand this, Congressman, because sometimes people don't get process. Why would they if they're not a staffer or haven't been involved in government? But, but how important is it that, you, that you've been down there talking to Noah and, and, for instance, this comments period? In other words, having ex- the experience in understanding this, this process, that, that's, that's crucial here, isn't it? It is. And I must say the cooperation with Noah has been uh, very good in, in being open-minded and thinking of a shorter comment period, thinking of how this uh, quota can be credited against time lost already and not, you know, a double penalty. In effect, that's the argument I make. Uh, and then moving this forward. Uh, so this is, uh, this is important. People have to understand this wasn't one-dimensional. Uh, the part of this that created so many problems is this was a criminal act, and there was criminal cases, you know, coming from this. There were still investigations that are going on uh, in this regard. I don't know what they are. I'm no, not privy to it, but uh, there's still... Uh, so you have the criminal side of this, uh, and that really interfered uh, and, and created some obstacles in going forward in the other front. But we've been able to move around those things, and uh, I, I'm very hopeful uh, in two or three weeks we're going to you know, get the ball started. And, and that that's you know, long overdue. Mm-hmm. It's important, as I mentioned uh, the, you know, in, in the article this morning, you know, there were a lot of <laughs> from New Bedford's waterfront uh, affected by this criminal act. Battleship Cove, the back to back hits start now. Now, as Congressman, I'm here. Commercial I don't, uh, the South Coast no- I can't explain what just happened. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. I have no idea. The FM side uh, took me hostage for a second. I'll, I'll have to deal with them later. Well, we can blame <laughs> it on the Russians. I mean, the Russian interference. Russian, uh, interference. <laughs> Russian interference. So, I, I just started to take this. Uh, from New Bedford's uh, waterfront. To Battleship yeah. Cove, the back-to-back hits start now. Now, as Fun 107 goes uh, to free. Yeah, I'm still here. Just, uh, oh, uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's the hip-hop version of my show. Uh, it's Congressman Keating and I. Fun 107 is bleeding into here. It's, um, uh, you know, it's Chris McCarthy, the DJ. I'm DJ McCarthy now uh, with Congressman <laughs> Keating. Uh, all right. Um, that, that, that should be cured now. All right, so, so let's start again before the Russians hear us. Well, I was just saying that uh, in the last analysis, uh, there were a lot of innocent bystanders uh, that, that were affected by this criminal act, and, and it's hurt their business, uh, it's hurt our region. But the good news is, finally, uh, we're moving forward on this, and, uh, and I'm quite optimistic uh, we're going to take a, what could, be a very protract, could have been a very protracted time frame uh, and moving forward uh, quickly. No, I, I think I think you folks have done excellent work. It's been, a, as, you, as you pointed, it's a, it's a multi-headed hydra here. There's the criminal side of it, which which is interesting. It hasn't been resolved completely, which that, that's kind of news to me. Um, and then, of course, the penalties and, and how this whole thing works out. And there are a lot of innocent people involved. Well, Congressman, I know you have to get back to the floor. You have a very busy schedule today, but I do appreciate you, you giving us a call and updating us on the foreign affairs and, and, and the fishing industry. And we'll look forward to speaking with you next week. Great. Now send my record uh, request <laughs> for the next show. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Have All a right. good day. All right. Bye-bye. That was Congressman Keating. Uh, We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back.